Nicole Scott here from Mobile Geeks. We're at Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall and there's a lot going on, including a review of the Sony Xperia Z3. Sony releases their phones in a six month cycle. Everyone else does so once a year. With such a short time between devices, it makes sense that the Sony Xperia Z3 is a minor evolution over the Z2. Having said that, the Xperia Z3 is the best smartphone that Sony has ever made. It's a beautiful successor and has pretty much everything that I want in a smartphone. It's waterproof yet thin, and all other devices in the market don't offer this rugged feature. Under the hood, it's everything you expect from a flagship device. Snapdragon 801, 3GB of RAM, 20.7 megapixel camera. But if you're familiar with the Z2, this should all sound pretty familiar. They have, however, bumped the 801 processor up from 2.3 to 2.5, the 1080p display is now much brighter at 600 nits, and the 20.7 megapixel camera offers a 25 millimeter wide lens. This might not seem like a lot, but when the name of the game is Iterate and Refine, Sony has listened to their users and improved upon just enough design elements to make a Z2 user consider the upgrade. Now there's no doubt that the Sony Xperia lineup has a distinct look. It's boxy, uh, this is the Z1, fantastic phone, totally loved it. Z Ultra, also in the same vein, but a little bit bigger. Then we have the Z2 and the Z3. Now in hand, the difference between these two phones is enormous, but just kind of giving them a quick look, you can tell the difference because, well, design-wise, they've decided to put a white border or uh, whatever color your phone is uh, coloring around the front. So that is the big telltale sign of the difference between the two. And then when you look at the edges here, um, the Z2 is just, or the Z3 is just so nice and round. So now if we just take a look at the way that these two phones are built, this is the Z2. Now this is the aluminum rim around the side here. And then we have a, like some material and then the Gorilla Glass. So the Z3, it's, it's a huge design change that we have the aluminum rim and then we just have the Gorilla Glass. And that's where we're getting the tremendous difference in hand feel. Now the other design element that's very different is uh, these nylon corners. So they've gone with nylon around the edges because it's supposed to be uh, more rugged. The, the top's kind of lost this ring around there. Nothing there. And then obviously the flaps are very different. Now I do feel that the durability of these flaps is gonna be so much better. Now, this is easier to open. And it feels like it's going to be just a lot more durable. Like it's smaller, it's not gonna uh, catch on as much stuff. Now when you pull this out, you just kind of get this feeling like there's a lot going on here. Um, and some people that I do know uh, do have broken flaps in their phone, which it's really ugly when that happens. I'm also glad that they've separated off um, the internals from, because like when you're charging your phone, you're just charging your phone. You don't want to access the SD card or the, uh, or the SIM. So all of that is uh, now neatly on the other side. So it's the same size, which is interesting, right? But there's also a uh, SIM card slot in here. The Z3 screen is 5.2 inches with a resolution of 1080 by 1920, sporting triluminous display technology. Everything appears to be the same as the Z2 spec-wise, but the brightness has been cranked up to 600 nits. In direct beating sunlight, the screen reflection coating does a decent job as well. Right now, I'm going to be making an argument for why 1080p is exactly enough. It doesn't eat too much battery. The Z2's display was already considered to be one of the more stunning displays on the market. If we just take a quick look uh, at the viewing angles on this. Nobody's going to be watching porn on the trains with this device. <laughs> Sorry, fellas. So Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall is looking lovely today, but I'm going to take you through some of the options. Now, Superior Auto is like the standard your automatic point and shoot. When you head into manual, I've noticed you can get, you know, a slightly better photo by kind of adjusting the exposure. Now, I've played around a little bit with that at NTU yesterday and I got some pretty amazing results. Now, if we head back in here, sound photo. 
So this, you see that there's a little thing here that's recording the sound. Then when I stop talking, you don't see it anymore, and then it comes back up. Let me give you an example of the sound photo. So here's some normal photos that I took of the marching band earlier. Here's a sound photo. Oh, so here's what it sounded like. So you get just like a little sound bite. Multicam is really neat, so I actually took the time to connect this, the QX10, the lens, the other day, and I played around with that a little bit. A little gimmicky. Let's take a closer look at some photos that I took. Now, this is with Intelligent Auto. That's decent. And then this is when you put it onto manual, right? You're just able to like pull down the exposure and really kind of get more true, true to life settings. So I even played around with the, the white balance a little bit on that one to make it just a little more true to what I was seeing. Now it was definitely like early morning, nice and orange. This is really how it looked, right? All of these different shadows, the orange, the kind of like early morning orange light. And then this is the auto, which would be fine. I mean, it's bumping it up to like more like daytime kind of looks, but like this is like the detail that you can get with, you know, like this type of like working with the actual camera app. So exact same point of view. And then you can see how much more you get, right? Here's the Z2. You're basically missing all of these over here. So this is what you're getting extra with the uh, 25 millimeter lens. I wanna know what my biggest pet peeve about the Sony Xperia Z3 camera is that they have not put in an autofocus. Sony, you know how to make great software. We've seen it with the time shift and how the video editor works on this phone. But I'm sure what you're seeing now is around the edges, there's a little bit of pulsing. There's a little bit of like little waveforms because Sony just has not put in a manual focus. If they did, like the, like the Nokia's, then it would remain tracked on my face and when I moved around, it wouldn't some go out of focus sometimes and then you wouldn't see like a waveform around the side. It makes me crazy. Sony, next on the Z4, you better put in a manual focus. When it comes to performance, we still have the Snapdragon 801 processor, which is what we're seeing in a lot of other flagship devices, but it's how the company executes on the processor. Is there any UI lag? And this is something that we're experiencing with a lot of flagship devices. The LG G3 can be pretty laggy, but this is actually the same processor that we have in the, in the Samsung Galaxy S5. And if you have used the S5, you'll notice on occasion there is sometimes a little hiccup. Now, Sony has no lag. They've killed it. The Xperia UI runs like butter. So Sony's killing it in terms of battery life. We do the laptop mag battery test and I was getting 15 hours. That is crazy. Considering the S5 gives you nine and a half and the LG G3 only got us like six and a half hours. So that is over double what we got on the LG G3. So two full days, your average, your average user might even get three if you don't really use your phone that much. So I think that this feature of the crazy battery is what's going to bring the Z3 into the mainstream. I'm a big fan of the Sony Xperia UI. I think it's clean, intuitive, and simple. You can pinch in and do a whole bunch of customizations. They have wallpapers, themes, uh, widgets, of course. They have two fingers will bring you to your quick settings, which you can edit quite nicely, adding in about, I think, 18. Uh, different options. A single finger, single, single finger pull <laughs> will bring you to notifications. Now, here's where things get interesting for me. This, you know, this isn't exactly vanilla Android, and when I access my apps, I would prefer a vanilla Android experience. This is kind of one of the negatives. You can organize them by most used, own order, which is kind of nice. Um, you know, you do have some options. Un uninstall is really good because it gives you the ability to kind of like quickly clean up um, any, you know, extra apps and unused things. 
This is my pet peeve about the Sony UI. What is this? Pull to the left? Pull to the right? No. If I want to do a quick search, I want to go straight up. I want to be like, yeah, let's just search Google. But no, I have to pull to the right to search Google, right? And this is crap, right? I don't really care what Sony thinks is what's new, right? I don't care what music and games and everything Sony wants me to know about. I think that this is, intu this is intrusive and something that they shouldn't have carried on. I think we should all complain about how crap this feature is. Yeah, so that's what I think about that. Now, that's kind of where it ends for me in uh, complaining about Sony's software. So when we go into settings, it's super useful here. Everything is really great. You have your Miracast to uh, share music from your music or media or anything like that. They have screencasts. So I mean, like Sony is one of the, you know, most ecosystem driven uh, manufacturers out there because they have a really high investment with their, you know, Sony Music and Sony Movies, right? And th this, this is actually why Sony has included the 4K option here with the camera because they want you to shoot 4K videos and then stream them to your TV, right? So I mean, out of everybody, that's kind of why you know, Sony has this big investment. Let's get, let's get back in here. Sorry, I got, I got kind of distracted. There's DLNA. You can tether with Windows. Now, this is something that unfortunately isn't up and running yet with uh, the PlayStation 4 sharing, but it will be very shortly. Uh, but you have DualShock, right? So Sony has gone into this huge gaming moment uh, way more than any other manufacturer because, well, they have the PlayStation, right? So Sony has a, like, Sony's all in on smartphones right now to kind of make them a hub for all of their other, you know, services. So that's the way it kind of gets interesting. Now, power management, 13 hours left on there. Now I can put it into stamina mode. Now that this, this isn't necessarily new, right? Low battery mode, location-based Wi-Fi only, right? So I kind of like that actually, right? That when you go home, location-wise, it knows that you're going home and will turn on your Wi-Fi so it's not eating your data. Now, I recently set up one of my friend's phones and she only had one gig of data and I had to go and find an app for her and none of them were really that amazing. So Sony has this built in that you can do that. So you can queue background data. I mean, like they've really thought about all the things that are useful for you and included them here in the settings so that you don't have to go and, you know, like go and like search for apps that will work. No, but now we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. I want to keep going to some really cool stuff. With security, you have your kind of average unlocked widgets and things like that, but they actually have a locate your device feature, which is really nice. Where is it? Smart Connect. So now this is one of the things that makes the Sony experience so much more intuitive than a lot of other, other devices. Now I am constantly using SoundCloud, right? So I've created this event that when I plug in my headset, I start SoundCloud. But nighttime, uh, whenever I plug it in at 7 a.m., between 7 and 10, it's gonna turn my uh, alarm clock and then put my phone onto silent, which I think is really useful. So like, these are the small intuitive things that you know, Sony's done with their, with their UI. Now, what else is cool? When I go into here, this is a very standard setup you know, with the Android task manager, except for what is this down here? Hmm. These are called small apps. Now this is a, not a particularly large display, so it's kind of interesting that Sony thinks that maybe you're gonna need, oh, that was, that's screen capture. Maybe that's not, not really what I wanted. Like this one, calculator, right? So I can have a calculator running. The only, the only thing is though, you can also have you know, a timer. So you can move these around. And you can go into the, into the Google Play Store and get, I think, like 30 or so of these. Um, and you can run a bunch of them at the same time. When it comes to audio, this does have dual front-facing speakers. Now, I've always found that they're a little one-sided, like the audio is only coming out of the bottom here. The other thing is the, the back really vibrates when you kind of crank it up. Yeah, there's some heavy vibration through there and there. But uh, for a 
The smartphone, this is surprisingly loud. With the Sony Xperia Z3, there are no compromises. It has an amazing display that's super bright. The battery life goes on for multiple days. For audio files, it has high-end audio. And the camera is one of the best in the business. The reason why it's probably one of my favorite smartphones on the market is that it's the anti-Samsung Galaxy S5. They have not jam-packed so much software into it that you almost don't know how to use it. It has been well thought out and it's kind of what you expect from a smartphone. It's super thin, even though they've increased the waterproofing. And while just on every level, they've iterated to make it just so much better. If you're a you know, Sony Xperia Z2 user, you will notice the difference when you move up, right? The hand feel is definitely better. You get half a day extra of battery life. But if you just bought a Z2, that's no reason to kind of feel sad about not having a Z3. So yeah, in conclusion, I am overall and have been for a while a Sony fangirl. Absolutely love the Z3. Among my top recommended smartphones, especially for someone who's looking for something rugged with great battery life, who likes to take pictures. I mean, and that's pretty much everybody. I mean, Sony may have niched out a little bit by including audiophile and gaming with the Sony PlayStation stuff, but I think that the battery life makes this a solid general recommendation for your average consumer. So that's me on the Sony Xperia Z3, highly recommended. Leave me a comment if you don't agree with me and I will battle you over this because I am a little bit of a fangirl. <laughs> so Nicole Scott here from Mobile Geeks. See you later. What? <laughs>